Hello, this is Keith Clark from My Digital Medium. Today is our first lesson. We're going to teach you guys how to experiment with instrumental transcommunication. And a lot of you will be watching these videos and just experimenting in general with audio, wanting to do cool things. Some of you might be computer gamers. We're going to go ahead and dive right into it. Virtual audio is very important. It's the base component of everything that I do on these computers, um, which is why it's class number one. Most computers have a single sound card. We are used to being able to listen to one sound at a time. For example, listening to a movie or listening to music. When you get into creative experimenting, there's a need to be able to route sound, to send sound, take it from somewhere, send it to wherever you want it to go, and that's why we're going to show you how to do that. It's going to become crucial for our later experiments. The program we're going to be installing today is called Virtual Audio Cable. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. If you open up a browser, type in Virtual Audio Cable into Google, the second hit will be Virtual Audio Cable. Once you click on it and you open it, you'll come to a page that says Virtual Audio Cable. You can download it. Uh, to buy it, I believe it's $30. It is worth it. I recommend it. We're going to go ahead and proceed with the install. Most computers are 64-bit these days, so we're going to install the 64-bit version. Just take the defaults, click Install, Allow when it asks you to install. Our installation day is on a Windows 10 computer. Once you install it, go ahead and open up the control panel under Start Programs. Under Virtual Audio Cable, you will see a file that says Control Panel. Open that. Okay. It's very important that you do this correctly the first time, otherwise it's going to be quite a pain to set up later on. What we're saying here is how many different audio devices do we need, will we use? Okay, if you're going to experiment like I do, I have up to eight different audio devices, but it can get confusing for people that just start out. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and set it to four. I recommend most of you set it to four in the beginning, because once you set it, it's going to grab that driver and it's going to take hold of it and you will not be able to change it easily. Okay, there's a way to change it, but I'll have to show you that later. Click on four cables, click set. Now, this wants me to run it as administrator, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to find a virtual audio cable. We're going to right click the control panel and click run as administrator. So that was a right mouse click. We're going to set the number of cables to four. Actually, in my case, we're going to do eight. Click set. Okay, if any of you run into this error, this is a common error for this program. Um, there's actually a video on YouTube where somebody showed how to fix it. Okay, so Windows 10, you also notice that they changed. Windows 7, you have an option right here called Sound. It would take you right directly into the Sound Control Panel. In this case, we just have to click on Volume Mixer and click on System Sounds. And we'll get to where we want to be. <clears throat> Once you install this program, if it doesn't work out flawlessly for you, which has happened to me many times, you need to come in here and disable any active devices because they're currently using the driver you just installed. That is why we could not change them in the program. Let's go ahead up to set it to 8 and we'll click set. And this only needs to happen the first time that you work on it. Click exit. Open the volume mixer, go back to system sounds. And I need to go back in here and re-enable what I had just disabled. Most of you will not have to deal with that. I just wanted to show you the most difficult way that would work. I only need speakers to play sound. As far as recording, it doesn't matter what your default is at this point in time. All that matters is when you scroll down now you'll see you have all these different audio cables. Eight different audio cables. For right now let's just set you know our line input as the default. We don't need to worry about the rest of these. So playback. <clears throat> It'll be your speakers, your headphones or whatever it is. Most, I had one line one disabled to be able to circumvent that issue with the sound card driver being held um, active, open, in use, and it wouldn't let me make any changes. I'm going to enable this. Now we have line one through eight. I never use, under the playback tab, I never use line one through eight for anything because that would get even more complicated. All I need to know is when I'm sending sound to a line input, do I want to listen to that one or another one? Now I'm going to show you why it's so cool. Okay, so just to refresh, the way to get to that is in Windows 10, so you right click on the sound icon, you go to Open Volume Mixer, and you click on System Sounds. Okay, now I'm going to show you the cool stuff. Before, five minutes ago, we were only able to open an audio file. Let's say this audio file. Okay, so we have the audio file playing. 
Now notice the audio file is playing through the speakers. Now here's where it starts to get cool. This is what you waited for. Right click on the sound icon and go into sound settings. Windows 10 natively has ways to route audio through it uh, from different programs to different places, but it only works in a limited fashion. It doesn't work for all apps or programs, it works for some. And click on advanced sound options under app volume and device preferences. Notice I have VLC Media Player open, it's playing the default sound card. Here in Windows 10, I can actually change this and say, play this output to my line one, my first audio cable. Let's play it, let's see what happens. Notice now, we don't have a green graph over here with the speakers, but we do have a green graph displaying that sound is coming through our line one. Click on Properties, Advanced. Oh, gotta be in the right tab. Let's go to Recording. Everything we change is like usually under Recording. Line one, Properties, and I say, I wanna listen to this device. So already we are routing the sound from one program into our first audio cable. Let's say I had another audio file. Say I wanted to open a separate file. Now because I have the program open twice, the same program, obviously we had it set in Windows to output to line one. You know, let's see if this works. I've never actually tried this. Can we define two different outputs for the same for separate instances of the same program? Well, let's find out. Let's see if I change this to line two, if the line one, if the, if the sound is output to both. Okay, so with Windows, when you change this, when you use this option here, it will only output, it'll change it for that program, all instances of that program, if I'm, what I'm seeing correctly, to output to that device. We don't, I don't use that option unless it's something very basic. Here's why. VLC Media Player has an awesome option to be able to, for you to define which audio output you want to send it to. Let's go to Tools, Preferences, let's go to Audio. Click on, under Show Settings on the bottom left, click on All. Click on Output Modules, Change, Wave Out to Line 1. And under DirectX, sometimes you might need to change that to line one. Okay, so I have one instance open. Let me actually... Audio, all, oh, output, DirectX, line one. Line one. If you don't want to listen to it, this is always done on the recording tab. Go down to line one. Say, don't listen to it. Listen to it. Don't listen to it. The point is, you take audio. You say, send it to virtual audio. Send it to a cable. Send it to a line. But the point is, you want to take sound here. You want to send it over there. And then, once you get it over there, you say, well, what do I want to do now? Maybe I want to add some reverb. Maybe I want to add some echo. Maybe I want to chop it with EVP Maker. Maybe I want to double it up. And, and that's where it starts to get really crazy. But for this purpose, I'm just going to show you. There's a program called EVP Maker. If I were to open an audio file, I would just say, open up this file. Play from 150 to 600 milliseconds which also happens to be the right amount size chunks for voice. Use the X fade function. Here's what most people are used to seeing. They're used to seeing audio just playing out through the sound card. But what they want to be seeing, if you, once you start to get creative, is there is a live function of EVP Maker, meaning it'll take everything, all the sound that's sent into a buffer, and it'll chop it live. So you can take live sound, you can chop it into random pieces live. And that option is actually right here under settings. Well, first you gotta set up. Let's say for example, I wanna take audio on line one. So live audio source, line one. Play it back on line two. 
Okay. Here's where it's going to get interesting. So, this is playing back on line one, right? So this this uh, file here on the left, you can't hear it because, of course, we don't have listening selected under the recording tab. This is the part that you need to get, get a lot of practice on and use. Click properties and click listen. So we know we have audio going to line one, right? It's right here. We can see it visually. We're not listening to it because we don't want to. Now over here, in EVP Maker, we're going to say, receive the sound on line one, which is right here, live audio source. Play it, play it back once EVP Maker is done with it to line two. Let's see if that works. You need to click extras and then live audio source. It starts writing to a buffer, so we click start. It takes about 10 seconds to write to the buffer. We click play. Now notice over here on the right, we're hearing the output of line two. So I could say, let me listen to the original source, see what that sounds like. Or let me listen to the second source together. Or let me just listen to the output of the second line audio cable. Now, if you think that's crazy, this is where it starts getting even more crazy. How many of these can I do? How many cascading loops or how many serial processes can I do in a row? Countless. So, so far, to recap, we're using virtual audio cable. All we're doing is demonstrating that we can listen to different things. Uh, we can do more things if we have virtual audio installed because it lets us route things. You could have this experiment running on this computer, live streaming it. And at the same time, you could be watching a movie on your computer. And if you do it correctly, the people listening to the stream won't hear anything you're doing on your computer. I could have four or five different experiments all running on the same computer, independent of each other, just because of virtual audio cable. Just to, as an example, virtual audio cable is a third party product. It's one of many. It's the only one I'm familiar with, which is why I use it. And that's what the tutorial is for. But you can also change, let's say we go to Faces and Sound, or live YouTube. Let's go try the native Windows way. Right now we have Firefox open, we're displaying the live stream by Digital Medium. To do it the Windows way, we would go to uh, right click on volume, go to sound settings. We're going to say, send all audio from Firefox out to line 3. So let me click on that. Right here is Firefox. Let's say, Set up to line three. This is where it get confusing, as you can see. Am I listening to line one? No. Am I listening to line two? Yes. Let's turn it off. Do I want to listen to line three? Yes. I'm going to click on listen, apply, OK. I'm going to go to faces and sound. I'm going to click the volume. So currently on this computer, we have three instances of sound all independent of each other. Right here, we have sound, uh, audio cable one, line two, line three. Now think of how crazy this could get. Okay, so you could generate a tone and say, send a 100 hertz tone out on line input one. Then you could receive it on line input one, chop it with EVP maker, and then send it out to line input two. Then you could take line input two set it into a bunch of filters, which we're going to show in later tutorials, clean it up, do different kinds of things with it. Then you could send it somewhere else. You could go on and on and on and on, and then you could output it to stream live. And you could do all this on one computer, and you could still use your computer to do your normally normal business. Uh, VST plugins, you're going to see why this is useful later on. If you are just, if you're a basic experiment or you're new to technology this might take a little bit to get the hang of it maybe you could just install one audio cable at first to get the hang of it to see what it's like uh, the point being this is the crucial background and basis of how to use virtual audio again gamers usually use this or they used to use this because they wanted to be able to hear the game speak in their microphone have their microphone route back into the game in addition to the music that they're playing on their computer. They can combine them all together. There are more advanced options uh, that will allow us to do this, but for right now, this is all we need. 
The install was easy. And remember, if you run into any errors, if you get the error that the, the device is in use, right click on the volume icon, click on open volume mixer, click on system sounds. This is the latest build of Windows. And you're going to be presented with this screen right here. Once you're presented with that, to bypass that error, right click and disable all of your audio devices under playback and recording. Reopen the control panel of the virtual audio cable. And when you're done, make sure to come back in here and re-enable. Again, to recap, the whole point of this tutorial is virtual audio. Why do you need it? Because it gives you flexibility. You can do many more things. You can run experiments. You can do all this from one single computer. I'm Keith Clark from My Digital Medium and MetaScience Foundation. And if you like our videos, please go ahead and click on subscribe. There will be many more to come. Thank you.